Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to the VIP Industries Limited Q3 and 9M FY22 Earnings Conference Call. From the senior management, we have with us today Mr. Anandya Datta, Managing Director, and Ms. Neetu Kashiramka, Chief Financial Officer. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing start and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anandya Datta, Managing Director, VIP Industries Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining on this call. At the outset, I am quite happy to announce a good set of results for Q3. The last quarter was possibly one of the best demand environments since the pandemic started. With COVID well under control, travel came back in a big way. The airline passenger traffic was at its highest since April 2020 that we saw. Compared to the same quarter of 2019, uh, airline passenger traffic was showing a recovery of 85%. Our results were in line with the trend. In fact, the better at 92% of 2019-20. The sequential growth compared to previous quarter was at 20%, which in the pre-pandemic years, what we saw due to seasonality, it used to be in the range of 4 to 5%. So definitely it was much ahead and, and, the, and the revival was much uh, better for us. The conducive environment from a COVID point of view not only fueled travel, in fact, from travel point of view, some destinations like what we read, uh, what we saw, Goa, or religious destinations like Tirupati, Shirdi, Varanasi, etc., actually had higher traffic than the pre-pandemic levels. So not only travel, but also celebrations and weddings had a flavor of revenge, revenge, revenge indulgence, which was quite heartening and reinforces our confidence of demand coming back to where the pandemic disruption left it. Left it. While the business environment was conducive in Q3, it's been a roller coaster ride for the industry of these pandemic waves that we have experienced. It's been quite challenging for the business, constantly dealing with the ups and downs. And unfortunately, as we speak, we are in the midst of one more wave. However, thankfully, the severity seems to be much lesser and lower health issues. And without any government imposed lockdowns or other restrictions, the impact on the business seems to be much lesser. As the demand situation was getting better, inflation became a spoil sport. We are witnessing severe inflation in all our input cost materials, from plastics to metals to polyester yarns, and adding to them is the ocean freight and all logistics cost. Compared to the same quarter of the previous year, uh, raw materials on an average is witnessing about 13% inflation, and that is not only eating into our cost efficiencies that we are building, but is also needing to take us price increases. We took a price increase in mid of November and half the quarter saw some recovery of, realize, of, 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 the, of the margin uh, impact uh, due to the price increase. You would have all received the results, but just to reiterate some of the highlights from the financial performance, uh, quarter three saw income from operations at 407 crore, which was 243 in Q3 of, of the previous year and 337 uh, of the quarter prior to this. And that's the 20% sequential growth I was talking about. Gross margin was at 49%. This is after netting off other income as compared to 47% in sequential quarter. This largely has come on our price increase and an improved mix. We kept tight control on our fix, fixed overheads and that delivered an EBITDA of 67 crore at 16% as compared to 14% in sequential quarter and a mere 8% in the same quarter previous year. Uh, profit uh, PAT for the period uh, quarter three stands at 35 crore. This is as, as against 19 crore of quarter two uh, and a loss of six crore in quarter three of the previous year. So as a business, we continue to be very sharp focused on our fundamentals. If at all the pandemic has disrupted something really big other than the demand it has been on our supply chain, 
and we have taken this opportunity of, of the disruptive disrupted period to build our supply chain back in a way that gives us much better control upstream and by doing our own manufacturing. In the long run, this will help us not only unlock cost efficiencies better, but will also make us cost leader and also improve our speed to market. Besides going, going higher on our own manufacturing and upstream control, there is one more area we have, we have been taking up and in a big way we have invested behind in the previous quarter. This is in hard luggage and we see hard luggage as a, as a proportion to the total uh, you know, luggage segment has been taking, uh, going higher in, in, in salience in a, in a big way. I think somewhat, uh, this is in line with the global trend and also uh, some bit of the hygiene factor during, during pandemic fueled it. Uh, this is also basis the supply chain which is possibly less dis disrupted in hard luggage because of local manufacturing versus imports. So we, as a business, we have improved, increased our capacities in hard luggage in a big way. In fact, after, after a long period of time, we have invested uh, to the tune of almost 36 crores in increasing our capacities in hard luggage. And this is across the sites that we have in India and Bangladesh. Our core strength was always our brands, our new products and innovation, and our distribution in cha through channels. And that's something that we have started uh, to scale back in a big way and much more strongly than what, what we had before. We saw a huge amount of new launches and a lot of pent up uh, you know, launches done in, in the previous quarter, uh, both in hard luggage and soft luggage, mostly in hard luggage, so a, a, a new range of products launched across channels. We're also continually, continuously working on streamlining our supply chain for better fill rates and availability. And as we do this, the pandemic disrupted our organizational strength in terms of people, talent, and the overall structural adequacy. And that's something also we have, we, it's, been a, it's been a hard work, you know, scaling back, but that's something that, you know, we're feeling good about in terms of where we are as we speak today. So going forward, I'm quite hopeful of having lesser or rather no demand disruption. While we'll have to battle in the short term the high inflation that's, that's on to us, uh, but we will continue to progress on strengthening our fundamentals and I'm quite confident we will further improve, improve our results going forward. Uh, thank you and with that we could uh, take the questions now. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Karan Khanna from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on a reasonably strong quarter. Uh, so, Anandya, firstly, on the recovery, uh, considering the quantum of price hikes which you have taken over the last couple of years, uh, can you help us understand uh, what has been the overall extent of uh, volume recovery which you have seen versus CQFI20, uh, which wasn't impacted because of COVID? Uh, thank you, Karan. Uh, so, the volume is moving in line with the value group growth and recovery because overall, uh, the ASPs of our products has not gone up significantly. It is just about a percentage or two higher than 2019-20, the same period. So from that point of view, the volumes continue to grow back, and the revival is not only in, 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 in value terms, but also in volume. Sure, sure, okay. And so, okay, secondly, you know, uh, in the investor presentation, you've given us a split in terms of uh, the mix across uh, Caprizi, and across all your brands. Uh, so can you help us understand internally uh, what mix uh, across various brands are you striving to achieve in the next year or so, uh, you know, when you say complete recovery? Yeah. So Karan, what we are about the scale up of the aristocrat brand because that represents our fight in the value end and that's something that is very important for us to gain, uh, gain back some of the lost share. 
Uh, however, our main strength is in the brands VIP Skybags, and, and those are uh, some things that we need to get back in terms of proportion. So we are focused on growing both ends. I think we have done a good job in, in coming back or powering up on the value end. Uh, the, the premium and the mid-premium end also had some headwinds which were, was external in terms of whether it's international travel or more you know, premium consumption. Also, we had challenge in our supply chain to bring out these products better in the previous quarters, but that slot got corrected as we speak in Q3 uh, for Q3. So I only think that mix will get more evened out better. Uh, we will come back to the strength that we had in VIP and Skybag, and hopefully we have added uh, we would continue the the uh, the growth in the aristocrat brand the way we have been able to get till now. Sure. So, Anandya, you know, uh, what I'm trying to understand here is that uh, uh, with the company, you know, striving towards a similar revenue mix which you had seen in 3Q FI20, uh, possibly with a higher share of aristocrat, uh, 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 is it fair to assume that given your investments on the supply side, uh, and uh, the price hikes, etc., that you've taken on a like-to-like -like basis, uh, your GMs or the gross margin should outpace those levels seen in 3 or 20 or 53 percent. Uh, uh, we would would have been somewhere there, but for the inflation that has suddenly come up. So unfortunately, you know, these forces are not all all uh, coming in our favor at 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 the same point of time. So uh, the mix is getting better and will get better. However, what I foresee in the coming time. Inflation versus price increase is something that we have to balance, and at this stage, price increase is something that we'll have to see also from a competitive point of view because we are not willing to blink first on 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 everything. Uh, maybe that's something that we have done in the past. So we're going to keep a very strong eye on competitiveness as we look at uh, pricing, and uh, and and uh, and and focus both on value and premium at the same time. Sure. And, you know, thirdly, on backpacks, uh, given schools and colleges have recently opened across several states, uh, any initial thoughts on the movement of this category in the second market and uh, also the possibility of, uh, you know, discounts to liquidate your current inventory? Uh, let me take the second part of the question first. I think we are in a better position, much better now, because, you know, somewhere during quarter three, the, the uh, while it was not uniform across, but there has been sporadic demand basis school opening in different states for different you know sections of you know classes and colleges and all that so we we have are in a better situation as far as uh, the stock uh, that we were carrying on on backpacks uh, however as you rightly said that we are also expecting things to become extremely uh, or, or far more normal uh, with the next session as the school opens and that's uh, something should bring back uh, you know a good tailwind as far as the backpack category is also concerned so, and then lastly, on the expansion plans for Sinar, uh, is there any development here? Uh, how much uh, capex will you incur, and what's the monthly volume of take uh, which you would expect from this plant uh, post commissioning? Uh, so the capex is happening in Sinar and a little bit in in Nasik. So if you meant Sinar is a separate site and Nasik is a separate site, so we are we are uh, we are increasing capacity and adding machines and lines uh, there. Uh, so both the sites are coming up. Uh, we are also starting to manufacture hard luggage uh, in terms of uh, making, sh producing shells in Bangladesh also. So, you know, in all uh, these three sites put together, uh, we would, uh, this is where we, I said that we have invested about 36 crores uh, in plant machinery as well as we have acquired some assets in terms of building and sheds in Bangladesh and also as part of this investment. Sure. Great. Thank you, and uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jinesh Joshi from Prabhudasi Lather. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, once this uh, new capacity uh, comes on stream and uh, uh, the raw material prices uh, revert uh, uh, to the past mean, uh, what kind of uh, swing can we expect in our uh, gross margins uh, due to rising share of own manufacturing? So very difficult to exactly predict, uh, you know, basis the inflation, uh, you know, where and how, how and when it will get tamed down. Uh, but, you know, in a, in a very uh, 
uh, you know, the pictures that you're painting, I think our, our gross margin at that stage should be consistently in excess of 50%. Uh, but at this stage, I don't think it is either meaningful or, or relevant on my part to predict a gross margin number there. It's, it's, it's a volatile environment. And we, we uh, are goal seeking or targeting our best to keep our number at 50% plus as we speak. But as everything becomes fine and from a competitive point of view also, we gain back the share that we are aiming to, uh, we, we would start seeing the efficiencies of back-end manufacturing coming onto, onto, our, onto our business uh, in the way we had thought out. Can you share the price hike which we have taken in this quarter? So, uh, we took a 4% price hike in this quarter, which was effective November 15th. So we got a one and a half month impact. Uh, sure. One last question. Uh, can you share the progress on EBO expansion? Because uh, if I recollect properly in the last call, uh, we mentioned that we would probably reach a count of about 460 by end of FY22. So uh, what is the update on that front? So I think that we had a very good quarter in quarter in, in uh, from October, November, December in scale back. Uh, most of this program, most of the opening of new outlets or EBOs are happening through the franchisee route. So on a base of somewhere about 220 such franchisee outlets, we opened about 45 or we signed up about 45, so work is in progress there. However, you know, this month and, and now as we speak, uh, it's been some bit of a setback there. So let's see where we hit. But I think, uh, you know, these disruptions are just something that is, you know, digressing uh, or, or slowing us down, uh, you know, the weeks and months that is going into this. But we'll be, we'll be coming closer to that number, if not on 31st March, maybe by 30th April, given, you know, we come back quickly in February. Uh, sure, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Lalpuriya from PNK Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening to the entire management. Uh, I've got a couple of questions. Uh, so I wanted to know, like, uh, what will be the CAPEX plan for full year 22 and 23? And uh, as far as I recollect, uh, we are planning to spend the 15 to 20 crores on increasing our Bangladesh capacity. So can you provide an update on that? So as I said, this is something that we have done now, which I spoke about uh, the 36 crores. And uh, there is there is some routine CAPEX that we do in refurbishment and... and uh, oh. uh, uh, and yeah, so that, that's uh, a similar kind of an amount is something that we can expect to be spending for the subsequent year in terms of capacity, capacity expansion. Oh, uh, okay. And uh, what will be the sales contribution from our Bangladesh operations in this quarter and nine months? Oh, uh, you mean to say from what we uh, sold, what what percentage came from Bangladesh? Yes, yes. For this quarter, it was about 45%. Okay, okay. And so, like, uh, we have uh, given uh, the brand-wise contribution. Could you also tell us the brand-wise contribution for the nine-month period, like, uh, the way we have given it for, like, uh, the quarter-wise? So, can you do it for the nine-month period as well? I don't have it right now in front of me. Maybe we can... Uh, can share can it with you. It. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's all from my end. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhargav Buddhadev from Kotak Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, congratulations, uh, team, for a very good performance. Thank uh, you. You mentioned that uh, Bangladesh contributed to 45% of uh, revenue in the third quarter. Uh, is it possible to highlight uh, from next year onwards uh, how much this contribution can increase to? Uh, uh, let, let me answer that question slightly differently in terms of, you know, uh, own manufacturing versus outsourced manufacturing. So, uh, own manufacturing, I'm expecting it to increase to almost 65 to 70 percent. Uh, this will be between Bangladesh and, and uh, Nasek and Senat overall, but the exact split is something that, I mean, like we could work it out and give it to you separately. So from, from what the key point is, let's say 1920, our own manufacturing was in the range of about 40%, which is going to go up to 65 to 70%, and that's the underlying shift that we are talking about. 
and and the and the other extreme is importing from china and that contribution which was as high as 50% in 2019-20 will come down to less than 10% in the coming year or even now as we speak it is less than 10% okay and what was the share of own manufacturing so far in 9 months oh so far in 9 months on an average 60 would be about 58 yeah 58%. about 58% okay oh. uh, secondly so there's a big, sorry so there is a big scale up quarter on quarter that is happening on on that so it's a very fast paced uh, scale up that is going on in bangladesh as well as sinhat and just since you have given me the opportunity would like to talk about bangladesh uh scale up is not only in total volumes but also in terms of the complexity it is taking on in uh, producing the the categories so it used to produce only about three categories and today bangladesh or in in the near future bangladesh will produce all the five categories that we are in and is already producing more than 300 skus per month okay understood Uh, secondly if i look at your net current assets uh, has gone up to about 343 crores uh, versus 260 crores in march and as against this the cash and investment balance uh, has declined uh, by about 100 crores during this 9 month period so is it fair to say inventory has gone up uh, versus march levels of 300 crores in december uh, there is a working capital investment of around uh, 69 crores if you see from march to uh, in the 9 month and balances on capex some investments on capex okay and what is the inventory as on december inventory as on december has not gone up uh, substantially it's just gone up by 25 crores okay understood and if i look at your ad spend uh, uh, this quarter it was uh, about 2.3% of revenue So will this be the trend uh, going forward as well? And if I uh, look at your employee cost, is it fair to say that the third quarter number can be annualized uh, uh, in FY23, or uh, it can also exceed from this? Uh, not on the ad spends. I think that is something that we are going to increase in terms of our investment in building our consumer franchise. Uh, this disruptive environment, you know, going up, going down suddenly is kind of you know within the quarter held back decisions on investments in that. But quarter three actually started. to see a lot more activity happening from our side in in terms of building uh, you know consumer preference for our brands using promotions as well as, as well as a lot of digital marketing so to answer your question that that ad spend percentage or or level will go up in the coming year and on the employee front oh, is it fair to annualize the third quarter and it or would be higher than that i clear maybe a slightly higher but not much no it won't go back to what it used to be before so i was trying what i was trying to understand is uh, are we okay with the current employee strength in terms of investing in growth or we are still looking to plug the gaps so from an exit point of view we are almost very close to where we want to be and that's why i said they'll it'll go up marginally from here but not for the 9 month period or uh, you know 12 month analyzed annualized uh, from now backwards so you know that that investment in terms of people and structure has been going up but we have reached close to you know uh, close to where we want to be and you know that won't be too many too much of addition there from where we are today in january so sure. and my last question is that 48% of revenue comes from hard luggage so would it be fair to say this is fully in house manufactured and as this percentage of in house goes to 60% does that mean that even on the soft luggage we are looking at increasing manufacturing capacity of our own so hard luggage is 60% uh, right now on quarter 3 and 40% is soft luggage the entirety of the hard luggage is manufactured in house uh, soft luggage uh, we don't manufacture in india it gets manufactured in bangladesh but uh, and and the india manufacturing is necessary for the csd part of the business so that gets outsourced but even that outsource partner is an exclusive partner where we have far better control on on the cost structures of of the product and the and the overall economics of how the product gets uh, you know made there so to that extent we in soft luggage we have uh, almost 70% of the production uh, 70 to 75% of the production in house and 
the remaining uh, one fourth gets outsourced, but in a much more controlled way. Okay. I'm sorry, just one last question. So if I look at share of aristocrats, it increased to about 30% uh, this quarter versus 30% during pre-COVID. So as we enter FI23 and possibly international travel also resumes back, do we see the share going back to the pre-COVID levels of 30% or how should we look at it? No, I don't think it will go back to 30% because the market always has been slightly bigger there compared to what our salience of that category was and that was a very conscious okay. effort and attempt to, to gain back share there. However, VIP and Skybag will definitely scale up from where it is today. Great. Uh, thank you very much and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Shah from MOSLAMC. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I just had one question. Uh, given the fact that uh, Q1 is our best quarter historically, and India has not seen a very strong Q1 uh, because of the first wave and the second wave, uh, how as a company are you prepared for this Q1 given the fact that most of us believe that this is an endemic and things will revert back uh, back to pre-COVID levels in, in terms of travel uh, and in marriages. So uh, just trying to understand your preparedness for the first quarter uh, in terms of your inventory and uh, production back end. So firstly, I would say thank you for asking that question. Uh, I, I think you are bang on and we resonate exactly the same uh, you know, uh, uh, same uh, conclusion that we have, you have that quarter one is the biggest quarter for this industry, and uh, you know we are quite raw, relatively sure that we should we will not have a disruption there. So we are looking forward to a good quarter one, and uh, we uh, are quite well prepared than what we ever used to be uh, before in terms during the pandemic stage. Uh, but yes, uh, a lot of things are happening. Uh, you know as we speak, the ramp up is happening uh, month on month. So we have some way to go, but I think relatively feel quite confident about doing a good job for quarter one. And would you also like to comment on the product mix that you would like to achieve, uh, given the fact that we are looking at a very strong Q1 across the board, uh, not for luggage as such, but just generally for summer businesses as well? Uh, in terms of the uh, hard luggage and soft luggage mix or the brand mix you wanted to understand? Yeah, brand or pricing, essentially, not the hard. Yeah, so I, I think I think aristocrat would uh, the value end will continue to to have the similar dominance. It may go down a few uh, percentage points, but that's uh, uh, that's that, that's a guesstimate uh, at this stage right now in terms of you know share the salience between the brands. Uh, but as I said once again, that VIP and Skybags would come back. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the share of the overall uh, revenue and volumes. So we'll see exactly what, what kind of mix comes up, uh, but we'll continue our, uh, our progress in aristocrat, maintain that level of, uh, you know, market share, uh, and we'll make sure that our VIP and Skybag brands comes, comes back. Sure. And uh, if you all... Uh on just one more question on the export part of the business, uh, would you like to spell out anything uh, in terms of any uh, progress that you would have made in the last a couple of quarters or how should one think about export business uh, over the next one or two years? So it's, it's like, like the domestic business that is also inching back to where it was in terms of where we are distribution, largely in the GCC countries and Middle East, the demand has started coming back. We had uh, our distribution uh, there, the brand is salient there, and therefore we kind of, you know, on a similar kind of revival is coming back there. But besides that, as of right now, we have nothing much to share in terms of, you know, the the uh, the plans or uh, things that can happen in the immediate future. And any D2C brands that you plan to launch only for online? Uh, is that a thought process and any any update on that? No, there is uh, oh, quite a few, but I don't think we are at a stage where we could start sharing or talking about uh, about that part as of now. No, I appreciate it. Perfect. Thank you so much, sir. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankit Kedia from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. 
after a couple of questions from my side you know first on gross margins where you said you're targeting around 50% or gross margins now with own manufacturing share increasing from 50 60% to around 65 70% uh shouldn't the gross margins ideally be going up even factoring in that uh you know the premium brands um, you know you're confident the share of premium brands in fy23 for ip skybag uh, would start to inch up uh, we already taken price hike uh, in the system and going forward if inflation is under control uh, do you think the gross margin guidance of 50 51% is slightly conservative uh yes uh, in 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 the statement that you made the big assumption is inflation uh, to come back to where it used to be before uh in terms of raw material prices when that happens definitely we will have the advantage of own manufacturing fully visible but i don't uh, expect that to happen in the in the near future uh, so despite shares of own manufacturing increasing you are saying that uh, you know margins could continue to bleed because we are not able to take price increases due to competition and volumes could be a challenge to them that's right so it's a very fine balance so there is cost efficiencies that is getting built because of you know our upstream control however that is getting negated by uh, by the sharp inflation that we have had and any any uh, chance of you know huge price increases to cover up for that is going to get restricted basis our competitiveness aspiration that we have so just to add uh, so an india mentioned that there's a 13% inflation and we have taken price increase of 4% two times so therefore 4 to 5% is absorbed in the gc so the efficiency is equal to that absorption from sure, uh the second question is on the ant spend you know if you're looking for the bumper q1 uh you know will the ant spend next year if everything is sitting today you know looking good uh, will it go back to that 5 to 6% range of ant which we used to have previously or will still be conservative and you know um, thinking some bad can still happen and you know conserve cash <laughs> no we won't we we, uh, we have never been uh, pessimistic about this we deal with the volatility uh, so we we are not going to be expecting bad things to happen so our ant will definitely go back to 5% uh levels in terms of our plans uh we we would plan to put that kind of money to continue to strengthen and build our brands and uh nitin ma'am just on the provisioning uh, we have done around 7 and a half crore of provisioning uh, in 9 months um you know would it get reversed going forward or do you think uh this provisioning is your so that thing? is with regards to the big bazaar mm-hmm. we all know it's in the public domain as of now nothing is happening but whenever things improve and somebody buys that business and we get our money it will get reversed in fact that amount is 22 crores the provision overall created in last year and now it's 22 crores for big bazaar sure ma'am that's helpful thank you so much ma'am thank you participants if you have any questions please enter star and one the next question is from the line of amandeep singh from ambed capital please go ahead thanks for the opportunity uh, while most of my questions have been answered i had one question on the supply chain so what we hear is that there has been uh, unavailability or delays in supply supplies across the micro market even by the larger players like yourself with supply chain issue seeming to be higher for the smaller and the unorganized players so in that context can you uh, help us with your thoughts on what is happening on ground uh, given over the last one and a half two years you have taken a lot of uh, initiatives to improve your supply chain so in fact uh, the last 18 months has been a struggle on our part also to uh, to uh, to get uh, to to bring supplies uh, to wherever demand was and that's uh, also because we took the tough route of uh, you know changing from importing from china to making it ourselves so you know in a in a short span of 4 to 5 quarters we kind of developed capability and capacities to make produce in house this uh, should result into better supplies in 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 the long term and in futures and in future to come and it will be in a more controlled fashion as in we will have a better control over 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 that because we are manufacturing it ourselves as far as the market is concerned yes we have seen sporadic uh, supply issues and largely it's to do with uh, you know china as well as the you know freight becoming uh, quite prohibitive for smaller importers to to bring in uh, products from china 
So to that extent, uh, it, it, it would be too much projective at my end to look to tell you, to even talk about what could happen in the future. Uh, but there seems to be headwinds as we see right now for uh, you know smaller or, or or you know very regional importers to bring in uh, products from outside and at at extremely competitive rates. So that dynamics may change, but it's it's something that only you know one the future will tell, and it's very difficult to predict that right now. So. So uh, I believe there is a double whammy of organic demand growth uh, and also grabbing some share from the unorganized players. So from that perspective, will it be possible to give some sense on how has been the mix now between the organized and unorganized players uh, versus pre-COVID? No, I'm sorry. I would not have numbers to do the, to, to leave that. And I think it, it's the feel on the numbers, which I think you also have that uh, unorganized sector has got some hit during the last 18 months. Uh, but I am sorry, I, we, there is no secondary data on, on, on exactly uh, what is the mix of you know, organized versus unorganized on an ongoing basis. Sure, that's helpful. That's all from my side. Uh, and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Alpit Nagvekar from Bajaj Alliance. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, congratulations on a good set of results. And uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so I had two questions. First, uh, if you could share what is the percentage of sales through the online channel this quarter? And secondly, uh, what are your demand expectations for, for, for Q? 13%. Uh, sorry, to answer the first question, online, uh, the e-commerce channel was about 13% for this quarter. I missed your second part of the question. Is it possible to share some color on your expectations and demand for the fourth quarter, given that there was a COVID hit? Uh, so, you know, as I was saying in my opening remarks, that uh, thankfully, and, and that's, uh, that's, that's the good part, the overall severity of the wave three seems to be far, far less. Uh, it's also uh, within the country is happening in waves, and not all cities that they are peaking at the same time. And uh, the government uh, imposed lockdown and restrictions are virtually not there as much uh, or nowhere close to what was before uh, was in wave one. So given all this, uh, the demand has not disrupted uh, anywhere close to what happened in wave one or wave. So that's the, that's the silver lining that we have. But we are in the midst of it. And uh, there are still some parts of the country. I think Bombay has become much better. But there are other parts of the country which uh, which is still heavily dealing with this. So we are. I'm quite hopeful that uh, we would kind of you know go through this wave without having the kind of impact that the second or uh, the worst one was the first wave. Yeah. Uh, uh, if I may ask one follow up on this, are you seeing some demand for backpack with cool opening happening in in fourth quarter, uh, like in January and so? No, not as much in January for sure, but we saw that coming in quarter three because as I was saying that there has been school opening happening quite sporadically across the country in various cities. So so the demand is, is on an average, the demand was much better in Q3 for backpack than prior to that. Uh, but typically the, the season for the next session of schools and colleges, all that starts around mid-March and thereafter. So we are, uh, we are, we are awaiting uh, that time to come and see what kind of you know environment uh, exists and therefore what kind of demand will come yeah. at that point of time. We are getting ready for a good demand to happen in the coming quarter. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Uh, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manish Poddar from Nippon India AI. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, so just you know, a few more questions. Uh, you know, following up to the previous ones. So when you say, let's say, revenue recovery is back to 92% for the company level, would you be able to hit me with a similar number for backpacks? It's much lesser uh, than that, significantly lesser than that, but let me... 45. Huh? Yeah, but it's only 45%. So, so any, any sense, let's say, you know, how much would be the gross margin impact due to this? Because I, I believe margins on backpacks are, are relatively higher. Not really. 
it was marginally higher pre-COVID, but we don't have a profile of gross margin which is so acutely or any anywhere uh, acutely in favor of backpack. So uh, this didn't have a gross margin impact, uh, so as to say. Okay. So uh, then just uh, getting to the channel uh, bit. So first of all, uh, are you now supplying to this big box retailer or, or you know, where, where you have pro done a provision or uh, you all are not doing any sales up there at all? You mean Big Bazaar? Right. Yeah, no, we are, we are very much uh, supplying to them and selling. It's, it's currently the, the operations of buying and, and selling is managed by, by Reliance. So, so the front end is... is, is uh, Reliance operating it, and so therefore these these uh, outlets and and uh, stores are significantly active for us, and there has been a big, a good amount of bounce back that has happened in in Big Bazaar from sales point of view. Okay, and uh, would you be able to help me? What is the nine month growth for let's say the e-com channel and the CSD channel? Nine month growth on over uh, e-com channel for this year versus for the e-com and the CSD channel individually. See, growth is not there, right? It's, it's a high growth. Last to last year was a very bad period. So if we have to see growth over... Actually, that's not something that what we see. We are seeing it always the growth over the base, which was 1920. Right? 2021 was a complete washout year, so everything will look good there. <laughs> but the real comparison is with the year prior to that. And an e-com channel compared to that had about 16% uh, uh, growth over nine month period of uh, uh, 1920 so so would it be fair let's say let's say when you said 92 percent is the revenue recovery right now let's say nine months and let's say uh, for q3 sorry yeah. uh, the ecom and the gt would be doing better than modern trade and csd uh ecom is understand which channel is lagging broadly so, so e-com is doing uh, obviously is is is, uh, is at the at the top of the growth stack, uh, and let me give you some figures for channel uh, for the quarter, and that would kind of contextualize it. So, e-com channel for the quarter grew by about 23% over 1920, uh, whereas modern trade grew by was almost flattish, but it was at 100%, 101% of 1920. General trade is still down at 95%. What's pulling down our growth is actually retail channel, which is our EBOs uh, channel, which is at minus 32. And uh, CSD is also much lower than what it used to be in 1920. For the same quarter, it, uh, we are lower by about 17% there. Uh, so about 83% of recovery. And the smaller part of the business is institution, which is even more down at 30% minus for the quarter. Yes. Got just uh, one last one then. Uh, uh, I believe the warehouse consolidation is uh, done, right? The the consolidation of all the warehouses in Vivendi. So the benefits, have you all started to accrue uh, in the last quarter or this will start accruing from the coming quarters? Something has done. Uh, from a cost point of view, some benefit has flown into there, but uh, that is something that we piloted only in West in terms of uh, putting, uh, consolidating the warehouse. Uh, the pilot experience has not been uh, really very favorable given the conditions we are in right now and it was not helping the, the revival of the business, our ability to service customers was slowing down. So we kind of held it at this stage right now and we would reignite the project once more stable environment is there and right now it's only West that we have done and that operation has stabilized. There is a benefit that has come in terms of the rental saving. Uh, but we need to really see the offset of that with freight cost and the uh, and the customer satisfaction in terms of you know delivery. So that's work in progress. Okay. Okay. Fine. Th thank you so much. Thank you, participants. We request you to limit your questions to two per participant. The next question is from the line of Thermal Meta from Kotak Life. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and congrats on a very strong uh, number. Uh, I just have, you know, one question on you know, margins and price hike. While we've taken price hikes uh, 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 to the extent of 4%, what I'm really trying to understand is uh, 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 we, we expect a very strong Q4 and a hopefully a much stronger Q1. We also have a favorable two-year base because both FY21 and 22 were impacted. 
uh, I also believe that the other industry will be far more impacted because of the supply chain issues. And unlike you know many other industries, your industry is a, a, a kind of duopoly or maybe three players control. So in that context, what really restrains us from taking aggressive price hikes? So when I mean by aggressive, it's about the, uh, uh, Sorry, I lost lost you for the last part that you were saying. Uh, oh. What reference you from taking price hikes, which can you know cover entire inflation because of you know uh, the positives which I just been in terms of stronger demand, uh, uh, duopoly market, or is it the conscious strategy to maybe improve our market share very aggressively at the cost of the margin headwinds? So it, it's a mix of both. Uh, one, I don't think uh, the assumption of duopoly and you know three players and Still, it is a fragmented bit of market while the, the unorganized sector is going to uh, be not as potent as it used to be before. But that there is still uh, you know, an agenda of gaining back some share that we have lost. And we lost more because of uh, supply chain and many other issues in the past. So uh, as I said, uh, we could take a price increase and, and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, net off or, or offset the, uh, the raw material inflation. Uh, but we're going to do that keeping a very strong eye on is it making me incompetitive and that's something that we are not wanting to do right now. Okay, okay. And in fact, the assumption that the smaller guys and the unorganized guys would be far more impacted than larger players like us in terms of the raw material availability in the Logically speaking, yes, but we haven't seen a lot of that as we speak right now, and maybe that's also to do with the timing and the disruption that keeps happening. I think in the in the next two quarters and quarter one, and we will have a better sense of that. So while we are hopeful, but we are not expecting that to to play up, and therefore, in a way, we are you know the assumption would be that we'll have to still fight, fight it out and get the revenues and our growths. So from that point of view, we're, we're approaching it, it, it more from, uh, you know, level playing field somewhat continues. And in terms of rock, I believe we, we, we had some from neighboring as between the top. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Mehta. Your line is breaking up in between. Is this better? A little better if you can continue now. But we uh, didn't hear the question, so you'll have to repeat it. Probably need to. Now, in terms of the raw material, I believe we were, you know, uh, having some maneuvering in terms of polycarbonate and polypropylene. You know, uh, where we are right now and have the benefits of the, uh, uh, or we can see some, you know. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, you you're right. Polypropylene-based hard luggage has has a fundamental economic advantage uh, over polycarbonate from a cost of input material point of view. And uh, to leverage more on that, the capex that we are talking about is entirely for increasing our capacity in polypropylene, which is an injection uh, molding uh, or injection uh, molding based manufacturing. So the entire thrust that we are doing right now is is on poly polypropylene. We have headroom in our polycarbonate-based luggage manufacturing, so we didn't need to invest in that. So overall, we are gearing up for a larger, much larger growth in hard luggage uh, in the coming coming year. Sure. Got it. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Agarwal from Gems Quest Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity and uh, congratulations on good set of numbers. Thank so, just uh, one question um, with respect to our brand Carlton. Uh, so, whenever I go to uh, some of the e commerce sites, I find Carlton products in many categories. So, I just wanted to details regarding I mean, what is our plan, what is our business plan in terms of uh, various categories that we are into and how we see this uh, segment. So Abhishek, sorry, your line is also breaking. If you can, you'll have to repeat it. Or maybe you're too close to the... You know. Yeah, just Hello? repeat. Yeah, better. Yeah, I, I, I just uh, want, I just have one question with respect to our brand, uh, Carlton. Uh, 
so whenever I surf uh, through this uh, e-commerce site, I see so many categories of products in, uh, in brand Carlton. Uh, say, for example, apparel and footwear and belts and stuff. So just wanted to understand what are our business plans uh, in this category. Uh, the question is not very clear, but let me let me try and paraphrase. And what's our plan for the brand Carlton? Yes, yes. Carlton in terms of uh, new uh, categories of product that we are into. This is the operator. Oh, we are not able to hear the management line now. Am I audible now? Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, you're audible. The management is not. Please hold while we reconnect them. Oh, yeah. Hello, We have the line for management connected, so you may proceed, please. Yes, yeah, so we, we are the, the brand Carlton uh, that we have is uh, in luggage and uh, some travel accessories uh, that we uh, sell under the brand, namely neck pillows and pouches. Uh, that's there in e-commerce as well. Uh, from the brand plan on Carlton as such, this is the premium most end. Uh, of our portfolio as of right now till about now we haven't done much there because the premium end was not uh, the most premium end was not the biggest focus given you know the disruption had had taken a biggest toll at that side but going forward we will we will look at one in in the categories and product segments that we are in we are going to kind of bring in more innovation and products there and uh, like other brands we're going to kind of uh, you know, continue the progress that we were doing prior to the pandemic. So, and just to follow up, um, any plans with respect to getting into other categories and what kind of business potential uh, do we see for uh, this brand? So, uh, you know, no, overall we are into few categories. Uh, luggage is one, we are into backpack and we are in ladies' handbags. And uh, and travel accessories. So these are the categories what we we have in our business uh, right now. And in the immediate future, in the coming year, we are mostly you know focused on only these. And I don't see anything new getting added in terms of a big category in uh, onto our portfolio. Sir, but um, some of the items like uh, footwear and belts and all this kind of stuffs are they uh, not sold or manufactured by us? No. Under the brand Carlton? Carlton, yes, yes. No, that's not manufactured by us. Okay, okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Namit Mehta from KC Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, from my side. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the viability of Chinese imports today and the implications of that on uh, the unorganized sector? Uh, and if you can talk to it a little bit, you know, both from the near-term perspective in terms of freight costs and so on, as well as uh, structurally from a medium and long-term in terms of uh, other cost factors in China vis-a-vis -vis Bangladesh and India. So I, th I think the freight, as we speak right now, is the biggest uh, biggest cost factor that has become extremely unfavorable from, I'm talking about ocean freight from China into into India, we all know about about the kind of you know uh, costs or uh, price hikes that has happened on container freight. Uh, besides this, I, I also believe that uh, the the uh, China's uh, cost efficiencies are has taken a beating because also of the shutdown of capacities and and scaled out. Uh, but from our side, we won't have too much of you know exact understanding of uh, you know what has gone there to make uh, them not look as competitive. But certainly, as we see, even for our imports, 
uh, we would find it quite difficult to, to bring in something and make it quite competitive in the market. How long will this run last and is it uh, long term and uh, a sustained kind of a situation? Uh, again, that's uh, something very projective and I, I don't think that the, I'm at a position to kind of predict that at this stage. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nick H. Shah from MOSLAMC. Please go ahead. Hi, I just had two questions. Uh, one is, uh, uh, if you can uh, comment a bit on discounting, which is happening in the industry in the sense that typically first quarter we don't see, but we do see in the second and third and the fourth quarter sometimes. Um, so on the industry wide, has discounting come off? That's the first question. And the second question was, uh, apart from luggage, we do sell some amount of accessories in our store. Uh, it's very small, but very high margin. Mm, any thoughts on that? So on the first question, uh, you know, the the pandemic saw some severe amount of discounting by all players, including us. Uh, and that was, in a way, some bit of distress and liquidation that was happening, and it continued for a good period of almost four quarters. Starting February of last year, we started reducing it, and by, uh, you know, somewhere by the end of the second wave, we had completely taken out any amount of extra discounting to liquidate inventories that we were running from 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 VIP. So from that point of view, uh, uh, discounting is, is off the table. Now the discounting or the discounts are more promotion-led and therefore it has more, you know, uh, it has a particular purpose of, of you know, either cross-selling, upselling, or uh, creating, giving a value uh, proposition to the consumer. So it, it's come back to what it used to be normally as a, as a selling lever that we were using. Uh, I forgot the second part of the question. Okay. Sorry, can you uh, ask me the second, second question? Second was on the, uh, apart from bags, we do sell some amount of, uh, if I may use the word accessories uh, along with it, and that's very small part of our business. But I'm assuming that's very high margin. Uh, so any thoughts to ramp that up? Uh, that's completely China imports. And uh, in the near okay, future, we'll continue to do, to be that. Since it's a very small part of the business, that's not something that is uh, bothering us too much right now. But we would continue that because I think it, it brings in a lot of value to our exclusive outlets and consumers uh, seek that. So, you know, it, 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 for, from a continuity point of view, we will, we will uh, be uh, continuing in those categories. But it's not going to be any, any big game that we'll play there. And in terms of a channel margin, we typically uh, see very high channel margin in in a, in a luggage business, uh, and they typically make two x uh, than what the manufacturer even makes. So, do you think there is a room for that to get corrected or adjusted over a period of time, given it's just a two-player industry to some extent? I mean, two or three-player industry. No, I don't see that, uh, and I have no reason to uh, to expect that in the in the short term, at least. Uh, it's a it's a high uh, volume in the sense uh, you know the space required is quite high to that extent uh, the the margins in the trade is also to do with the return uh, on the investment and the spend that the person does so it, it it is there and I don't see that to be a big play going forward. Yeah. And one final question to Nitu ma'am is uh, if you're selling to Big Bazaar currently, then shouldn't be the provisions reversed at the first place uh, because if that account is active. Uh, then why do we carry provisions? So. so I'll tell you, the way it is working is the earlier balance is freezed as on one date. That's done for everybody, not only for us. And the new business is happening in a different account and the monies are coming based on the due dates. So whoever gets the deal, whoever buys the business, will clear all those old accounts. That's how it is. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. The next question is the last question from the line of Prolin Nandu from GMO. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Yeah, yeah. So thanks a lot for taking my question. So this one question, right, I mean, from my side uh, would be uh, on your plans, uh, you know, in e-commerce space. So uh, uh, just wanted to understand, do we have a strategy to uh, gain re leadership in this segment as well, just like we have in an offline kind of a market? And uh, uh, I mean, do we have a, a team, do we have an infra, or do we have, uh, you know, uh, some strategy? Uh, if you can give some uh, color on this, that would be great. 
of course we have a we have a strategy and we have a team and a whole setup that is uh, that is uh, catering to the business and uh, as i was saying that we have progressed uh, in a very big way over the last four quarters in terms of improving our capability to to serve uh, and to sell through this channel so it's it's very much there and it's in line with the with the with the industry standards yeah Sure, but I mean, is there a, a timeline? Uh, uh, I mean, you know, that we have set internally as to by what time? Uh, because we have been gaining market share there, right? In some sense, and we have uh, been a late entrant in terms of at least, you know, uh, uh, having a, a dedicated sort of a strategy. So, any timeline by which you know we can uh, uh, probably uh, gain that leadership position in that segment? Well, I don't have a timeline as such, but the expectation is to. Uh, uh you know we have come pretty close uh, there so uh, uh you know sometime in the coming year we should definitely try and be what we would call as a fair share depending on overall the consumer share that we have in terms of the relative share to competition should start reflecting in e-commerce as well that's great thank you lot and all the best thank you thank you I still don't know for the questions. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Neetu Kashiramka from VIP Industries for closing comments. So I can just say that it's the beginning of good days and uh, looking forward for a better Q4 and Q1. And uh, thanks, thanks everyone for joining this call. Uh, any further questions or queries, you can connect with me anytime. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of VIP Industries Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you everyone. Thank you.